thank you so much for staying with us right here on Vion Wallet and welcome back. Now, horse racing is traditionally touted as the sport of kings. But times have changed now and the sport consistently sees popularity in its own right amidst the who's who of the country. This is a sport where the top brass of India Incorporated and many other families get together on weekends in Mumbai, in Delhi, Mysore, Bangalore, Kolkata, Pune and Hyderabad to enjoy their horses race away to showcase equestrian supremacy. The Mumbai horse racing season, which witnesses the running of the top Indian classics of the Indian racing calendar, kicks off. We bring you a curtain raiser, take a look at this package and then we're joined in by Vivek Jain, the chairman of the RWITC Limited. The biggest racing season of the Indian racing calendar, the Mumbai horse racing season, takes off in Mumbai. The highlight of the season this year will be the Indian Derby, the Indian 2000 guineas, the Indian 1000 guineas and the Indian Oaks. Well, there are several highlights. As you know, the Bombay season is a long season and uh, it bands over several big days. We have, of course, the big race being the Indian Derby weekend on the first weekend of February. The highlight would be that every weekend we have a new contributor, a new sponsor. The overall stake money payout for the season will cross multiple crore rupees with the Indian Derby crossing the three crore rupee mark. Easily the highest price money for an individual sporting event in the country. Several high quality races with millions in stake money will be run with top thoroughbreds that will kiss the Indian turf. We have certain events like the Indian Derby, which offers a huge prize money. The total prize money that the club pays over one season would be about 30 to 40 crores. Yes, that's high, but that's over five months. And we are able to pay this prize money because of our magnanimous sponsors and of course, by the owners who contribute a percentage of the prize. The latest flavor of Indian racing is the evening racing calendar under floodlights, which promises to put Indian racing on the global map as world over this tradition marks the extension of festivities around the sport. We plan to have 20 days of evening racing in the season. We plan mostly to do it on Thursday, so to have one fixed day of the week, which has evening racing. As you know, in Hong Kong, evening racing is run at Happy Valley on Wednesdays. We felt the weekends are not ideal because a lot of the prospective attendees have other social commitments on the weekend. The sport of horse racing that is touted to be a sport of the classes is now conscientiously making an effort to become a sport of the masses, welcoming the entire country to become a part of the larger-than-life spectacle. In New Delhi, Sheti Narula, we on. There you go, some fantastic shots coming in there from the Mahalakshmi race course in Mumbai. And joining us now live on the phone line is Vivek Jain, the chairman of DCW Limited and the Royal Western India Turf Club Limited as well. Good evening, Mr. Jain, and thank you so much for joining us right here on We On Wallet. Let's start off with the Mumbai racing calendar, which is kicked off in great style. I mean, it is supposed to be the best racing season from all the seasons overall in the country with the running of the 1,000 guineas, the 2,000 guineas, the Indian Oaks, the Indian Derby as well some top classics run at your center right there tell us about the highlights that you have in store for this season well it's as you rightly said it's a great season of racing running through five months right till the middle of april we pride ourselves on bringing you not only the four indian classics the punawala million but several other top-notch races so in effect every weekend you'll feature a sponsored race or a high class event which makes Race at Mahalakshmi, a great experience. Uh, also, uh, you know, we're uh, talking about the overall contribution this year has crossed the 9.1 crore rupee mark. The overall stake money payout through the entire season is going to be roughly around 30 to 40 crore rupees as well. And even the Indian Derby is going to see stake money in excess of 3 crores, which makes it the highest payout for an individual sporting event in this country. Give us a lowdown of how the money really works in this sport and how this has become a great sport for owners to own horses. And of course, horses making money for themselves as well. So the mathematics really adds up. Well, higher prize money automatically means the better horses run in those races and attracts the top talent even from horses outside in outside Bombay. 
And the Indian Derby, which is very clearly the top race in the country, in fact, Judo Drank is one of the top sporting events across all sport. That's run on the first Sunday of February. We have for the first time a co-branded derby with United Breweries and United Spirits. And the stake money would be touching about three and a half crores. It is the, the most eagerly looked forward to lifestyle sporting event in Mumbai and possibly anywhere in India. You know, let's talk about owning horses now. Anyone and everyone can own a horse. You really do not have to be a billionaire to be able to own a horse. So let's educate our viewers on that front as to how a horse turns out to be a fabulous alternative asset class as well. Well, owning a horse is quite simple. All you need to is get a club member to propose your application. And in addition, you would have to prove a rough earning of, the prior, of your income to prove that you could afford to own the horse and there'll be no bad debts. And to make it easier for an average person to own a horse, you could have up to 10 or partners who join together, which reduces both the initial investment and the running cost. It's obviously a great game of thrill. Uh, you can't always put arithmetic to it because it's a passionate game like owning a painting there may be no return or you may hit the jackpot and the horse may turn out to be a top horse so it's a question of luck but the sheer thrill of owning the horse going into the paddock and leading the horse in should the horse win is a great thrill and that's why many many people are attracted to the sport so before we let you go, the last question that we have is the quality of thoroughbreds in India. And I believe that all our Indian horses are also going abroad, most of them rather, or, or rather a few of them are going abroad to race as well. Uh, tell us the growing number of horses going abroad to compete as well. And th that also brings us back to the quality of breeding of bl bloodstock in this country as well, which is seeing a fair share of its own uh, popularity. Well, horses are going abroad. I wouldn't say a great number because... There are a lot of restrictions in sending horses abroad because of the quarantine and health protocols. We have had a few who have made a mark, most famously Astonish, who went to Hong Kong and won, Adler, who won in the U.S. Several of our champions have won in Singapore and Malaysia. Our success in Dubai has been limited, of course. The most successful horse there was Mystical. But it's only the very best, and that always remains one of the dreams of a champion in India to go abroad and circumvent all these challenges and to do the country proud. But I must tell you, it's no easy task. And of the several horses that do well, it's only a very few handful that go across the shores to take a chance abroad. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Jain, for joining us live right here on We On Wallet. We will continue tracking the Indian horse racing calendar in much detail as the month's going forward. And, of course, all the very best for a fabulous season to come as well to you at the RWITC. Let's move on now to the markets. And after experiencing rather choppy waters, the markets ended rather flat in trade today with the equity benchmarks gaining just 0.1% and 0.2% thereabouts. The Nifty held fought about the 8,100 mark, Airtel saw a sharp rally of 5%, whereas SBI cracked 3-odd percent in trade today. The domestic equity markets are facing several issues, including demonetization, strong sell-off of Forex, and an expectation of rate hike by the U.S. Fed. The rupee ended 68.71 to the dollar today. Brokerage reports have given a strong overweight on Indian equities as compared to the other emerging markets. Morgan Stanley's report says that it's underweight on Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand and Qatar as well. Asian markets have started the week on a back foot as oil prices have slipped as well. Europe today is trading in the red. The Donald Trump factor may just be losing its way over global financial markets. Let's find out from a markets expert, N. Prasad, if this is true and check with him how he feels America will open today on the back of weak global queues as well. Mr. Prasad, good evening and thank you so much for joining us right here on Beyond Wallet. What's your sense really of the American markets opening today? Weak global queues, are they ogring down well, not well on the American market opening? American markets may open like to slightly on a weakish note, weakish note, 
but they may pick up because there are some confidence growing measures are taking place and even the rate hike is there there is a dollar is strengthening across the uh, global currency that may push up little investments into america right and what's your stance about the indian markets rather flat today in trade do you think the demonetization effect is still ogring down badly on the markets even now or do you think that effect is wearing off as the days go forward the demonetization effect has not worn out still it has not come to the play in a big way actually the demand has uh, for this quarter will be very low as far as some key sectors are concerned there is a very liquidity crunch and the sales will go down this will result in the next quarter results so i don't think immediately the markets can major go up but they can still go down my bet is still it can go down up to 7500 7600 easily it is taking a support of 7960 but it can be broken any time it is hovering around 8000 8050 that is only because of the new settlement that started on the friday that is looking 60 50 60 points premium i feel markets will go down in the coming weeks in overall all right you know i'm just taking a quick look at how the american markets sorry rather the european markets are trading right now and the cac is down 0.75% as we speak the dax down 0.87% thereabouts as we speak and the fitzy is down roughly half a percent 0.64 to be precise down in trade now uh, give us a sense of what is going down badly on the european markets as well uh, tell us a little more about how is europe getting impacted in the overall scheme of things globally see the, as far as the euro when the dollar is getting strengthened the most of the things are shifting more most of the asset base is shifting into dollar based uh, dollar based assets so that is where the european markets little crunch is there as well as brexit is coming near so european markets are not very strong enough they are not on a very strong wicket first of all they are on a weak wicket and the uh, interest rate hike in america would send lot of money into america lot of money would not come into emerging markets which are flowing abundantly will stop well that would take the money off the table and shift it to america the smart money will move to us side from you the european know, side you know the brokerage reports have given a strong overweight for indian equities as well as compared to the emerging markets now what's your sense of that particular report do you see strength develop in the indian equities going forward because the same brokerage reports have given a downgrade and an underweight on other emerging markets especially asia why do you think that mismatch is going on at this point of time see in india this problem is temporary maybe a quarter or two but afterwards we have a quantitative demand our population is never coming down our consumption will not come down basic consumption will keep on increasing so there is no reason that indian market in longer term will go down but it needs time to get adjusted to this currency crunch and to get into this check mode and a plastic money mode people are under transformation see and during this transformation period there is slight vacuum in demand so that would push down the immediate quarter result down or maybe two quarters result down then the third quarter is become normalized so it may take about say roughly 6 to 7 months for normalization after the monetization and also people are worried about the every day speech from the prime minister he is every day threatening it so many things new measures short measures so people are not investing right now so they are waiting which assets to get in what to do a uh, very so briefly wait and watch more very briefly before we let you go give us a sense of how the rupee is going to pan out because there has been a deutsche report that has come out that says the rupee could well hit the 70 marker by the end of this fiscal year or by the end of next fiscal year it could even go all the way up to 72 so fair bit of depreciation coming in there on the rupee front what's your sense on these brokerage reports and what they are indicating or do you stand to have a diverse opinion on that jopin you know i was the first guy who started telling that rupee would hit 72 but that was technically it bounced back from 68 technically speaking the rupee has broken the chart it's entering into an uncharted territory it is new, making new highs of 52 week see there is a saying in the market highs are higher than imaginations lower low, lows are lower than expectations the market has started hitting highs it will go beyond there will be short sellers squeezing everything and rupee is into uncharted territory definitely i see 72 is a problem. possible proposition there is no doubt in that no no divergence in that view it will happen because of the demonetization scheme lot All of right. confusion will be there
All right, Mr. Prasad, we're going to let you go on that front. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have on this edition of We on Wallet. And like he said, highs are highs than imagination and lows are lower than expectation. As far as the rupee is concerned, we all have to wait and watch out as to how the rupee pans out in the next few months to come. Well, that's all for now on We on Wallet. For more news and updates, check out our digital, mobile and social media platform as well. Thanks for watching We on Wallet. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 9.30 a.m.